All right, so we added team switch and now we want to focus on registration. And if you want to get the code up to this point, the link of the source code is in the description of the previous video because I will add a new source code at the end of each video that is just for that video. So if you want to skip a few parts, you can just get the source code from the previous video's description. Let's start by adding a link to our navigation. So let's go back to resources and JS layouts and main. So right now we have this link that doesn't have any classes. So what I like to do is to turn this into a custom component so we can reuse it in other places. So in the JS folder, I'm going to create a new folder and call it components. Then within that, we will have a nav link dot view. And then we will have our script here and our template. And I can just copy this link from our main layout and paste it here. And of course, we want to make this dynamic. So we need to define our props using the defined props macro and then pass an object within the parentheses. So we need a route name here and I can call it route name, which is going to be a string. So instead of this hard coded home, we can just use that route name and for the label, we can just use a slot or we can use another prop. So that is your preference. So I'm going to add a line here and use the slot element, which is basically saying anything can go in here. So then I'm going to add some classes to our nav links and that is just some padding and rounded corners and some hover effect. So now let's use this in our main layout. We need to import that first. So we want to say import nav link from components folder like this. And then down here, we want to change this link to nav link. Now we don't want to use this href anymore. We just want to use route name and set this to home. So now we can see the effect, but we can't switch between the pages because we have only one. Let's create another page for our registration form. Inside the pages folder, I will have another folder and I will call it off. Within that, we will have a new document. I will call it register.view. And let's open our home page. And I'm going to copy everything and just paste it here. Just change the text to register. And of course, we don't need this header tag. Let's just stick with that P tag. All right, so for now, we can close this one. And next, we want to have a route for our register. Since we are going to have logic later on, we might as well create a controller for it right away so we don't have to repeat ourselves. Now, I want to have a controller inside an auth folder. So let's go back to terminal and use PHP artisan make colon controller. And we want to say auth forward slash register controller. So this will create that controller inside the auth folder. And if we go back to our project within app, HTTP controller, auth and register controller right here. So now if we go to our web.php, we can create a route and use that controller. Let's say route, and this is going to be a get route. We want to go to forward slash register and then use an array as a second argument and pass in our register controller and the method that is going to show that form. And I'm just going to call it create, which is just a convention. We also want to name our route and we want to call it register. All right, so let's create this method in our register controller. So let's say public function create and we just want to return an inertia view so we can use inertia and colon colon render and since our register component is inside an auth folder we should say auth forward slash register and that's it and of course you can use the inertia helper function instead of this but that is again your preference all right so we have a route we have a controller and it is returning our register view let's go back to our main dot view and let's copy this nav link and paste it above the button because i want it to be on the other side of the navigation so of course the route name is register and the text should also say register on this div wrapper i also want to apply some classes so the elements would be next to each other so flex items center and a space x6 so there we have our link and if we click on it we go to register home and back to register so this is working the way we want but i want to add something else to these nav links for instance right now there is no indication in the navigation that says we are on the register so i want to keep this hover effect active if we are on that page and for that we can use the page global component if you have view devtools installed you can open that one 
and if you don't have it you can get it from google extension store and if we click on the inertia component itself you can see we have a component name and at this time it is set to home even though we are on the registration because this is kind of buggy and if we reload it will probably fix it so right now it doesn't work you have to close the whole section and then open it again and now it shows auth.register the point is we can either use the components name or the url to tell our app we are on a specific page and i prefer to use the component name if you don't have this dev tools you don't have to install it it's not necessary but i just wanted to show you where is this coming from all right so let's go back to the application and to this nav link we want to apply a conditional class based on the components name so right after this class attribute we can also have another class but bind it to an object which is going to be our condition so notice the colon before the class name and the object inside the quotations so the key in this object is going to be the class we want to apply and that is a background of slate 700 now as the value we want to apply our condition so colon and then we want to grab the page component so this is the global page component in inertia so we can say dollar sign page and then component and we want to check if this component's name is the same name as whatever page we're on so let's accept another prop and i'm going to call it component name which is going to be a string so then down here i can use this component name which would be dynamic now in our main dot view we need to pass another prop so that is component name so let's go back to main.view we have two nav links we need to pass in the components name for the home page which is just home with a capital h and for register is going to be auth forward slash register because we have it inside an auth folder now back to our website you notice the register link is active and if you go to home we have the same effect here and it's easier to see where we are in the navigation all right so we are done with navigation and our nav links let's just start creating a simple form here i'm going to close everything and open up our register view so first i'm going to add a div here with some classes and we just have a white background mx auto to make sure it is centered paddings all around and rounded corners and some shadow and when it is dark the background is a slate 800 so if i add anything here and go back to the website we have this container and if we switch to dark mode it looks like this now because i want to use this container or this div in many places in our application again i'm going to make this into a component so back to the components folder let's create a new document and i'm going to call it container.view and we just want to grab everything from register and paste it here instead of this random text we want to use that slot tag again and that's all we have to do so we have our components now we can import it in our register view by saying import container we need to go out two steps to get to the components folder and then container so now i can delete everything again and use our container so we have the same thing but now it's a component so it's easier to maintain it or reuse it anywhere now let's have a div in here inside the container we want to have a title here so let's use an h1 and say register a new account and in fact i'm going to make this a component as well and then we will have a p tag that says already have an account question mark then you can log in for example so this this will be a link but for now i'm just hard coding it so let's add some classes on the div itself so margin bottom eight and text center on the h1 i want to add text 3xl so it's larger bold font and margin bottom two so this is our title again let's make this into a component because we will reuse it so same process in the components folder i will have a title that view document then i can copy this h1 and in our template tags i'm going to add this here and i want to have the script tags as well and instead of this text we want to use that slot again all right so this is our title let's go back and import it so we can just duplicate this line and change that to title now instead of this h1 i can say title like this and we can remove these classes now for the link we want to create a text link component so again new component i'm going to call it text link dot view i'm going to grab everything from title and paste it here and then delete everything 
then use the link component, which is again part of inertia. We want to have the href, which we will bind it to the route function, and we will accept a prop and call it route name like before. And also let's have a label here instead of adding the slot. So we don't have to apply this closing tag when we use it. I mean, we don't have to do this, but this is just practicing different ways. So we want to define the props using the define prop macro. We need a route name and the type of that is going to be a string and we need a label. And again, it's going to be a string. So now our text link component is expecting a route name and a label. Of course, we need to add some classes here. So I'm going to use these classes we have a bluish text and font medium underline to represent a link. And when it's dark mode, it's going to be a bit lighter. All right, so this is our component. Let's go back to register and import text link like this. So we can use it right here. So let's say text link and self close it like this. And we want to say route name is going to be login, but we don't have a login. So let's just say home and label that is going to be login. So if I format my code again, it looks nicer. And if we go back, we have an error. Let's see what's going on. Property router. I think I know what I did. So in the text link, I use the router. It should be route. And you probably saw it. I make this mistake quite often. I just say router instead of route. That was my bad. Make sure you use route and not router. This should solve our problem. Let's go back. There we go. We have our title and this text that should go to login. But for now, we are just going back to the homepage. We can close this text link and we are back to the register and we want to start creating a form. So let's have a form here and we can delete the action attribute, but let's add some classes, a space Y six. So this will add some space between the elements. And within this form, I want to have an input field with label. So instead of coding all of it here, we will create a component and I will explain what's going on there. So let's create the component first, and I'm going to call it input field dot view inside our components folder. Then I'm going to paste some code here, and then I will explain because it's quite a lot and I don't want to waste time typing it. All right, so let me explain what's going on here. So we have some props and a model, but for now, let's ignore them. In terms of the elements, we have a label with some classes that is expecting a text, and we are using the same prop that is called label for this four attribute for the text of our label and also for the name of our input field. And this is actually not necessary since we are working with Vue.js because we don't need the name and the label, but it is good to have this for accessibility purposes. Then underneath of that, we have another div, which is a wrapper for the input field itself and an icon. Now, because I want this icon to be dynamic, so we are able to change it, I am adding another prop that we are calling it icon right here for the class of this i tag. So I'm using template syntax so we can dynamically change that. Then we have our actual input field and the type of that is going to be passed in as a prop or it's going to be text by default. So we have a type prop that has a default value that is set to text. We also have the name, which is again using the same prop as label. We have a placeholder that is using the placeholder prop up here. And that also has a default value, which is just an empty string. So if we don't have a placeholder, then we don't have anything. And of course, we want to use the V model to get the data out of this input field. And because it is a two way bind, we cannot just use a simple prop. We need to use the define model and save the return type in a variable so we can pass it down to the V model directive of Vue.js. And of course, we have some classes. So all of this code will be available on GitHub and the link of that is in the description. So now let's just use this in our register for Let's go back to register. I'm going to import it first and we called it input field. And inside the form tag, I can use that input field. I can self close it like this since we don't have any content. First, we need to add the label. So I can call this one name. So this is for the name property. Then we want to have an icon. So I will use this ID badge. And if you want to grab an icon, you can go to font awesome and just search for, for example, user or any icon you will like. And what you actually need is the name of the icon, not the whole thing, because I already have that in the component. So for example, if you want user, you can just type user here, for example, like this, but I'm going to use this one, which is 
choose ID badge and let's go back to our website. So this is our input field and we can also switch to dark mode to see how it looks. And also I want to make this form smaller. This is too big. So on the container, we can add the class and set the width to half. And I think this is much nicer. Now we have this one. Let's add another one for the email. So remember for the type, we said the default is text. If you want to set the type to something else, you can just simply add the type and then the type of that input field. In this case, we want email for the icon. I want at and for the name, I want email. Let's add two more for password and password confirmation. So the label is going to be password. The type is going to be password and the icon is going to be just a key. And then we want to repeat this down here. So we want to say confirm password. The type again is going to be password and the icon is going to be the same. And if we take a look at it now, we have our form. So all we need now is a button. But before that, I'm just going to add a text here, which is just for the purpose of looking more realistic. So we just have a text with some classes and I'm just saying by creating an account, you agree to our terms. And this is our text down here. Again, if we switch to dark mode, it's quite nice, I think. All right, let's add the button and we will be done with this video. So of course we want our button to be a component again. So let's create a new component. I'm going to call it primary btn.view and I'm going to paste some code here. All we have here is an HTML button with some classes and a slot that would be the text. For the classes, I'm using some padding and rounded corners and background. And also I'm adding this disabled classes. So when the button is disabled, the color is going to be kind of gray and the cursor will be awaiting a cursor. So let me show you what it looks like. We need to import this in our register component. So let's duplicate that line again. We call this primary BTN. And down here, after that P tag, we can use it and close it like this. For the label, I can just say register. And if you take a look at it, it's down here. If I add the disabled attribute here like this, you can see the color is changed. And if you move your mouse over it, it is waiting. So we will use this feature with inertia form to disable this button when the form is submitted. And that is basically our form. And in the next video, we will cover the logic and actually registering a user. So again, if you just want this markup, the code will be in the description and I'll see you at the next one.